three research reports assignments. Okay. So with this lecture, once I finish this lecture, I've already gotten all the all the pre-recorded lectures for me to upload. And then I'm gonna give every one of you the link for you to, to go to this uh, website where all the important information you need to do well in PT over there. Okay. Especially for those of you who are like half listening to my lecture, and anyway, you might think we talk. Okay, you are half listening to my lecture, and then you still can look up. If you still can have that YouTube video to look again, so that you can uh, look through. I'm gonna upload it to you to YouTube. Okay, I, I have a So yesterday we did review how a formal research report looks like. Okay, today I want to deal with specifically GP research reports. Now, you know how important the assignment is. A lot of you didn't do well the last semester because you didn't read the re you didn't read your assignment carefully. You didn't do your report properly. There were a lot of things missing. That's why I need to redo this. Uh, I need to redo this lecture again. Now, Generally, when you submit in your report, these are your requirements. You will need to create using your always a Google Doc. Okay, usually we'll use Google for, for your work. And then make sure you share edit rights with me. A lot of you, when you send your Google Doc, you keep forgetting that and then I receive a Google Doc that either I have no rights to view or I can view but I can't write anything. Okay, so no, I want edit rights. So make sure when you share with me, you give me edit rights too. Okay, now write on the Google Doc using your own always account. Please don't go and give me a uh, uh, pink pinky love twenty two at gmail dot com. Who on earth is that? Okay, I want you to use your always account to write your Google Docs, and then finally upload the link onto Toddle to submit to me as your assignment. Some of you, I don't know what happened, what, what, how, you, how you upload until you end up being a Word file. Okay, watch for it. A, a Google document is always a link. Upload the link to me. Okay? If you are looking for an A star, these are the requirements for your content. I need to see all this in your contents. Your research must be varied and verifiable. In order for your research to be varied, for an 800 word assignment, we are talking about how many sources I must see? Nobody remembers. Four. Four. Four, okay. Out of these four one sources, textbook. one of them must be a textbook. Textbook. textbook or printed book. I must see that if these are missing, your research will be considered not varied. In other words, if you do an 800, 800 word report to me uh, and you only find everything from one source, not varied. You do an 800 word essay, you have four sources, hooray! But none of them is from a printed book, not varied. Verifiable means I am able to check that you have used the correct sources and I'm able to check the sources. The APA format will help me in this. If you give me any kind of strange format that I can't easily verify, you lose marks. Okay? So your research must be varied and verifiable. The ideas between each piece of research must be linked properly across different perspectives. In other words, I must see your train of thoughts across the perspective. If you can't even show me that, that you understood there are two perspectives to this globally, then you will lose marks. Okay? And finally, there must be a strong evidence of independent thinking. In all the assignments I give, there's always one section where I want to see a personal perspective. Okay? That personal perspective is actually your independent thinking. Some of you in your previous assignment to me didn't even bother with that. You lose marks. Okay, so if you are looking for an A star, I need to see these three for your content. Organization. Okay. 
12 marks go to your content, 8 marks go to organization. That gives you a full 20 marks for your assignment. What do I need to see if you want to get an A star? I need to see that your citations are made in APA. I use the word preferably, but actually I want I want to see it, okay? In in your in footnotes format. So those of you who still have is like, Mr. Chen, what are what on earth are footnotes? Okay, look at Google and look at the video of Google that I'll be putting up, and then you will know how to do footnotes. Footnotes are basically at the bottom of your page and it shows you your citation itself. That means where did I get this information from? Okay, who am I talking about who's giving me this piece of information? So your citation must be made. Okay, somebody asked him, Mr. Chen, what if I'm using MLA? Yes, you may. Okay, MLA is also okay as long as it's all recognizable formats. I, I say APA because everybody I know use that. Okay. Finally, it should also be organized with good paragraphing in sections with headers, tables, and relevant pics. Okay, I always use this joke because I've got these students who, who gave me an assignment with two dragons, uh, or with two dragons on the page, and I'm like, this even don't even have nothing to do with China, and you are giving me a, 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 a page with two dragons. What kind of relevant pics are we talking about? Okay, so if you can give me these two requirements, this is also an A star for you. Okay? So I usually tell my students organization marks is an easy eight marks to get. Okay? They don't vary a lot, unlike content. So just quickly, just easily get the eight marks, and your chances of getting an A or high is really not very low. Okay? Now, penalties. Quite a number of you suffer the penalties. And the funny thing is, I've already talked about this in, a, in my previous lecture. So I'm giving this lecture again, and I want to remind you. If you did not submit a report, or if your report is totally plagiarized, zero. Okay. Now, mine is a research report. So Grammarly will usually flag some bit of plagiarism. But I'm very glad to know that some of you really like totally, it's like totally original, that Grammarly cannot even find any signs of plagiarism. For some of you, Grammarly detected some signs of plagiarism, but you have supported yourself with very strong sources and very strong references and footnotes. Okay, so because of that, you will not be considered to be plagiarized. But if you submit me something with no sources, no research links, no nothing, gone. If Grammarly flags that you are plagiarized, it's all gone. Okay? Or if you refuse to even submit me a report, zero. Now, reports that consist of a series of citations may be awarded poor bands in both content and organization. What do I mean by that? I don't see anything that's written by you. You just simply cut from, uh, copy from this source, paste it there, copy from that source, paste it there, copy from that source, paste there, and you're very smart. You know that Mr. Chan said everything must put footnotes and sources. So you make sure you put everything footnotes and sources. Well, I can't say anything much, but I may actually award you a poor band for that. Okay? I may actually award you a poor band for it. I, I can't give you a zero because you have already shown all your research. Okay, you've proven to me your research with your references, your citations, but your report is basically just like that. I will give you a poor bet. Late submission attracts a penalty of between one to four marks. I usually give two marks unless you are really ridiculously late. Okay, and in fact, if you are ridiculously late, I have the right to award you a zero. Okay. Mr. Chan is a very patient teacher. Two terms ago, I had one student whom I have to chase and chase and chase until he submitted the assignment on the day the report card was supposed to go out. It was unbelievable. Okay, that's how patient I can be. But please don't test my patience, okay? Please do not test my patience. I have the right to award you a zero if it's blatantly late. Usually, I'll give a penalty of two marks. Unless you're going to be late by about one week, then I don't think two marks cuts it. Next, penalties of between one to four marks may also be given for other reasons, like the use of informal language. Okay, this is a formal research report. 
I expect it to be a formal research report. Please don't go, hi, this is Elise. Today, I am going to talk to you about uh, globalization. No, that's not formalization. I'll avoid that, otherwise you'll be penalized. You are not writing a children's book, okay? You are writing a research report. Sometimes this thing works a bit late. Yes, precisely. No, nothing to do with this a bit. Okay, nothing to do with decisively. This is it's just this one. Okay, I didn't have the same form with the rest. Okay, now some tips. For those of you who want to look for a textbook citation, because everyone was telling me, Mr. Chen, even my own text, GP textbook is a ebook. You can use your textbook of class suits, okay? I, I used to tell my students that your science textbook is a very good source for many research, okay, with GP. So you can actually use the, use the science textbook, for example. You can use my GP textbook, okay? So even though your textbook is in it's an electronic version. It's considered a printed book because it's actually electronic version of a printed book. You understand? So that's why some of you ask me, Mr. Chen, how about ebooks? Your ebooks have pages? Yes. It is considered printed matter. <coughs> okay, because you can cite pages from it. Now, what happens if you need a textbook in the library? That means you go to the library to look for a book. This is what you can do. I always tell my students, be smart. Take a picture of the cover that will give you the title, the author's name, right? Mm. Take a picture of the page with the publishing year. That's usually the first, the second or third page. Okay, then you can find the publishing year, right? Take a picture of the close-up of your text that you want to cite. Okay, so you can just simply, so that you can type it over when you go home. And finally, in fact, don't really type it. I heard that there are software that can even translate the picture with words no, into no, no. words. You just have to save it in a uh... Photo and you can just copy yeah, fantastic. You see, you guys are so lucky. When I was your age, I don't even have such things. And then finally, take a picture of the page with its page number. You see, once you have these four pictures, you already can do your citation for a textbook. Okay, so this is the advice I give my students. Okay, some of my students, a lot of them actually start looking for Kasu's textbooks. That's the easiest. <laughs> you, you, you can assess it the most easily. Now, important tips on assignment accuracy. How many of you in the last, uh, in your, in the previous one, the one on migration, I think, you lost marks because you didn't read your assignment carefully? Quite a few of you, right? Okay, you lost marks because you didn't read your assignment carefully. Always read all the points of your assignment brief, okay? Your assignment brief will tell you what exactly you need to do. Read it very carefully. If I'm asking for, for a migration, please don't talk to please don't give me something. I mean if I talk if I want to talk about human migration, please don't start writing an essay. Please don't start writing a research report on birds migration. Okay? It's out of point. Once you're out of point, your content marks all gone. Can you imagine? Out of 20 marks, you just lost 12 like this, like, just like this. Okay? So, make sure you read them carefully and check the exact requirements. Okay? It was very, for my grade 6 class, a lot of them also lose marks. Their assignment, okay, they were supposed to do a conflict on traditions. A lot of them gave me a political conflict over land. Okay, so this country fight, this country that country fight another country, that's a political conflict. I want a conflict due to tradition. And a lot of them lose marks because of that. They lost their content marks. Okay? So always read carefully, check the exact requirements. Now, some of you took advantage of the consult. Okay? And every time you make sure you do something during class, and then you came to me and you checked with Mr. Chen, Am I, am I going in the correct direction? And I actually gave you advice, no, you didn't mention this, no, this, no. So a lot of you who did well actually took advantage of the consult with me. 
a lot of you who didn't do well, I have to trace with you until, okay, near, until nearly time for you to hand your assignment. By then, it's too late for you already. Okay, so take advantage of the consult with me. Now, examples, okay, I think I actually mentioned this. Examples for assignment accuracy. Research on a conflict due to traditions. Okay, some students give me a political conflict. Okay, a fight between two countries. Choose two waterborne diseases. Okay, I'm going to ask the class. If you, if you are a student, you didn't know you will fail, but you, now that you're, this class is expert, what do you think a student will write about that will make her feel content? If I want you to choose two waterborne diseases. That won't fail, the student will do well. Tolerance is correct. I want to know what what would what what kind of student would fail this? Yes, I The one who writes about diabetes. The one who writes about bi diabetes, yes. Diabetes is a disease. Or maybe he wrote about malaria. Yeah, I don't know. Are these waterborne diseases? No. No. So so maybe the student wrote about malaria and diabetes, which yeah are diseases, but they're not waterborne diseases. Yeah. Gone, out of point, all content marks lost. Okay, all content marks lost just like that, out of point. Yes. Even chicken pox. Even chicken pox. It's not waterborne. Okay. So be very careful when you read your assignment. Make sure you understand and be accurate over what you need to do. Okay. Finally, some tips on organizing your assignment. Read all the points of your assignment read and use them as headers. Okay? Your assignment read, read their points, use them as your headers. You won't go wrong. Okay? And then, if you need to have list, let's say for example, the four factors of good choices. <coughs> five, sorry. Five factors of good choices. Are uh, you familiar with that? Yeah. Ah, uh, you remember? Really? Health, health, personal beliefs, environment. environment. Uh, what that, not that? Probably about like the cultural traditions. Uh, I think you've already got that. Yeah. Ah. Okay, not bad, not bad. Oh, my no, that was I want to cry already. already. My some of my students still remember. Okay, good. You still have all the people remember all Now, for, so, so the the five factors of food choices could be your header. And each of the factors could be a subheader. You see? Easy organization marks. Okay, so this is a good tip on what you can do to do your organization so that you can easily get the marks for organization. Oh, okay, easier. Yeah. So examples of lists for Assignment organization. So the five factors of food choices are mentioned. Four perspectives, two hindrances to conflicts. All these are easy lists that you can have headers and subheaders for. Okay, I mentioned the five factors of food choices. Four perspectives. Everyone should know by now. Global, national, local, personal. Well done. So for the new ones, okay, remember to remember to read out on this uh, six. A has already finished recording for me the lecture on the four perspectives, which I will put up so you all can view that as your homework. Okay, I will give you all the link after I've, I've set up the page. Okay, so and with that, I have finished with my recorded lectures. So